Europe is facing a real threat from Russia who's threatening that they will make Denmark ships the target of Russian nuclear missiles. Denmark is uh, right now considering becoming part of the NATO shield that will protect Europe from nuclear missiles. Now, Europe, uh, the EU, the European in a Union, is worried that the, what's happening in the Middle East and Iran will spread into Europe, so they want this missile shield. Well, with, it, with Denmark missing, it just doesn't work. And Russia has said if Denmark joins, that it will make their ships, Denmark ships, the target of Russian nuclear missiles. Mm. Speaking of nuclear missiles, it's kind of interesting. Iran has demanded that Israel renounce nuclear weapons. It's kind of the pot calling the kettle black, isn't it? I mean, they're doing all these nuclear buildings and build-outs and undercave stuff, and now they're calling for Israel to renounce their weapons. The Iran militia chief said that destroying Israel is non-negotiable. Now, let's understand... Of course, as Christians, we have a tie to Israel. That's the land of the Bible. That's where Jesus was born and died in his earthly ministry. That was, that's the land of the 12 tribes. It's the land of the Bible. But beyond that, politically, it's the only democracy in the Middle East. And all these, you know, oh man, all these different... Muslim reigns and all the stuff that's going on, they are the only democracy. The only place right now where it's safe to be a Christian in the whole Middle East because you're protected by Jewish law. Netanyahu, uh, to, to Obama, he said, the Iran deal threatens Israel's security and existence. And Obama rejected Netanyahu's call to recognize Israel. They recognized Palestine. I think we'll get about then. Then the Vatican has also recognized Palestine without recognizing Israel, without recognizing Jerusalem. It's hard to even explain how deep this goes. Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. And yet, the embassies aren't there because it's a disputed capital. Even the United States has the embassy in Tel Aviv. But the president has said that we are going to move the embassy to Jerusalem. Uh, president Bush. The first President Bush. <laughs> So it hasn't moved. And if you're from Jerusalem on your American passport, you can't put that you're from Israel. You can't put Jerusalem, Israel, or from Israel. If you were born in Jerusalem, I has to say Jerusalem. Because it's a disputed capital. Disputed by man, disputed by the United Nations, not disputed by God. God says that is his city. It's the only city he says is his city. Hmm. There's two charged in the United States with helping ISIS, which is, there's a lot of stuff going on online. And you know, one of the things you need to realize too is that all these killings, they're using almost like marketing to attract more people to their movement. And they're attracting kids in the United States, young adults. Think about that when you see the group of young adults that we have here that are on fire for God and doing incredible things. Encourage those folks. Amen? Yeah, praise God. Now, some are surprised by the next numbers. I'm not really surprised. Uh, the numbers, I think it's from Barn and now say uh, the number of Christians has declined from I think it's 78% down to 71%. So 71% now say they're Christian in the United States, down from 78%. 71% of United States citizens are Christians. Where are they? I mean, 
71% of the population doesn't go to church. And not even on Christmas and Easter. They don't give. They don't serve. They're not engaged in ministry or helping other people. But I think what's happening is the gray areas are beginning to disappear. And people who say they are Christians, you know, it, it's getting less popular or acceptable to be a Christian. And so those people who were just saying they were Christian because it was socially acceptable, they're starting to not say they're Christians anymore. But we do have in the Bible, we're going to talk about this today, it talks about a great falling away, a great deception. How do we not become part of that? Well, keep your knees on the ground and your nose in the book. Keep in the Bible. Read the Bible yourself. Be in a good Bible teaching church. Because we know from Scripture that some people are going to be deceived. Hmm. Here's one that's kind of interesting. Most Americans now say Jesus is a sinner. I did a questionnaire of people, and the bulk of Americans now say that Jesus, when he was here on this earth, that he was a sinner. Now, the percent on here is that 52% uh, of the general population said that Jesus is a sinner. 56% of the millennials said that Jesus was and is a sinner. Now, here's an interesting thing when you kind of superimpose this same study found that 62% of the general said that Jesus was God so you've got some people that say he was a God but he was a sinner and then 48% of the millennials said that Jesus was God so they think that Jesus was a sinner but some say that Jesus was. I think it's fairly safe to assume their theology is pretty messed up, isn't it? It's definitely not biblical. Jesus was a sinner. He who was without sin came to be sin for us. That's why it's important. He wasn't a sinner. He was perfect. He was holy. He took our sin upon him. So it's an important doctrinal issue. And Jesus was God. People say, well, you know, Jesus, would, he never said he was God. He was executed for claiming to be God. The high priest made that clear. Thomas, after the resurrection, came to Jesus and he said, my Lord and my God. And Jesus didn't say, oh, Thomas, get up. I'm not God. No, he accepted his worship. Hmm. And a how ISIS recruit was ready to kill his biological son, had made plans to kill his son, to behead him. Oh, man. Uh, an American teen pleads guilty to online ISIS recruitment. And again, they're using these killing videos as recruitment tools. And uh, I just heard this morning news out of Israel that um, one of the uh, Maftis, one of the... the head Muslim guys has now said that in this season of Ramadan that those who uh, are martyrs during Ramadan there's a feast going on a lot of violence going on uh, he has said that they will get ten times the rewards now for being a martyr now, I don't know if that's 700 virgins or how that works but he has said he's just proclaimed that evidently you can do that If you're not clear about this, the only way somebody that's Muslim can be assured they're going to heaven is through martyrdom. Everything else is works-based and iffy, and they don't know if they're going to the Muslim heaven or not. The only sure way now, isn't that interesting? And I was thinking about the, the 
world religions and Christianity and Islam and Christian Islam, Muhammad and you know and their God wants you to die for him. Our God sent his son to die for us. That's a big difference, isn't it? Big difference. There's a, an Islamic man who was planning on attacking churches in Paris. He shot himself and they uncovered these plans. Now, that was a little close to home because we support a church in Paris, a missionary who's there teaching the Bible in the middle of all this craziness. And he's watching the anti-Semitism and the stuff. And I don't know if they, the guy had planned to attack this church, but praise God it was exposed. The uh, ISIS released a video of, of uh, killing 30 Christians. There was a Muslim, uh, well, there was a, a, a ship from Libya, and the Muslims threw 12 Christians who were on the ship overboard. They basically threw all the Christians overboard. Two Muslims set fire to a 14-year-old boy in Pakistan. A leader said that Christians could completely disappear from Syria, where there's been a Christian presence for the last 2,000 years. There's been five attacks in five days in central India, and ISIS has captured 88 Eritrean Christians in Libya. Eritrea is a, a country uh, ne near Libya in Africa. Those are startling headlines. And especially as you hear more and more of Christians being beheaded and martyred. Now, one of the things that we need to realize is the book of Revelation talks about people getting beheaded. Christians would be martyred for their faith by being beheaded. That's not happened historically before, especially on the level that it's happening now. And you need to understand as a Christian, when that begins to happen, you need to understand that that triggers something in God. When his people begin to be attacked and martyred. God will let sin, he's so patient, so merciful, so gracious with sin. But the thing that triggers him over and over in this book is martyrs. Martyrs. It's an interesting word. The word martyr occurs in the book of Acts. Also occurs in the book of Revelation. The word martyrs, plural, only occurs one place. Revelation. Even now, the Lord is pouring out His Spirit on all flesh. We see some of the falling away, and we see Christians being killed for their faith. Never before have things lined up like this. Let me give you some scriptures, and if you're a note taker, jot these down and explore them later, because I'm going to move quickly through these. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. It says, now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be so soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now that refers to the temple. There's other passages that refer to the temple. That's why we get excited about the temple. You can go to templeinstitute.org, but the temple has to be there in order for the Antichrist to reveal himself as God in the temple. So that's why we get excited about the temple. Not only they are they have the instruments, they're training the Kohen, the, the priesthood over there, first time in 2,000 years. Now, that word falling away is apostasia. And what that means is a defection from truth. A falling away from truth. What is truth? 
the Word of God. Some Christians think this is disposable. I guess I use that word Christians lightly. Because what we're supposed to do as Christians is when we see something that we need to make a decision on, we look to the Word of God. And if Jesus says, or the Word of God says something is wrong, it's wrong. It doesn't matter what you feel about it. You may feel that, that that's not right. You know what? That doesn't matter. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. If God says it's right, it's right. It doesn't matter how many people call right wrong. It doesn't matter if the president calls right wrong. It doesn't matter if the Supreme Court calls right wrong. If God calls wrong wrong, it is wrong. Amen. Mm-mm-mm. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. And then he moved to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. It says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. That's an interesting one. Unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers. You mean like online? Maybe. Without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power from such people turn away. Form of godliness, but denying its power. What's, where's the power in Christianity? It's in the cross. You can't have Christianity without the cross. You remove the cross, it's not Christianity. That's what some people are doing. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. See, we're not people that have no hope. We have hope. If you know Jesus as your Savior, you have hope. So as you hear these new items, news items, don't get freaked out. Don't get anxious. God's still God. The news hasn't changed that. Now, it's interesting. It says, I would not have you ignorant, brethren. It's important where that comma is, isn't it? (laughs) Because the way he says that, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, about the end times. But if you move move the comma, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, about the end times. That's where you got to be careful where these commas are placed. And another one that's important is that we got that one in those verses. Let him that stole steal no more. Let him work. So it makes sense with those commas. But you start moving the commas around and you say, well, let him that stole steal. No more let him work. <laughs> so pay attention to the commas here. At 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says, I do not want you to be ignorant, brother. I mean, we're supposed to know about these things. So we're going to comment on these things. And yes, they're, they're testing trying times. But what are we supposed to do? The Bible tells us. Jesus told us. Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up. Lift up your heads. Because your redemption draws near. It's a time to be excited for the believer. Amen? It's a time to be excited for the believer. Amen? Praise God. We should be looking forward to the return, to the rapture of the church and the return of Jesus. Amen. Right, is anybody excited in here? Can we give us a praise here? Praise God. So, what do we do now? Keep your fires burning bright. Cling to the Word of God. 2 Corinthians 7.14 says, If my people, that's us, called by my name, Christ, 
Mashiach, Messiah, Christians. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. If you got something going on in your life, turn from it today. If you've, you've fallen in something, turn from it today. Don't wait. God's not shocked that you, you've fallen. He knows all about it. Turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. And listen to this. And will forgive their sin. But that's not where the period is. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. We live in a land that needs to be healed. There's innocent blood that's been spilled on the land. There's Washington, D.C. is not protecting Christians who are abroad, including Pastor Saeed, who's been in the Iranian prison for over three years now. That, that, could, that could be me. That could be one of our pastors. I, I've met Saeed. He's a good man. He's a verse-by-verse -verse Bible teacher. He goes to a friend uh, church in Boise, Idaho. He's an American in an Iranian prison for sharing the gospel. Hmm. I will tell you this, and the news just barely touches on this, but they... they he went over there and, and taught some, and they were, they were fine with that. Then he came back to here to Idaho. Then he went back over, and he started little home Bible studies in Iran. And the number that I've heard tossed around among believers is that he started 104 Bible studies in Iran in houses that are now growing in the churches. Isn't that cool? Praise God. But you're not going to hear about that on the news. But here's what we're supposed to do. First Thessalonians 4.18 says, Therefore comfort one another with these words. Or in the New Living Translation, so encourage each other with these words. And then a few verses later, and Paul doesn't repeat himself often in his teaching. He doesn't use that method. Jesus uses, Jesus would repeat himself often. The first time I read through the Bible, I really didn't understand, understand why Jesus repeated himself so often. Then I had kids. <laughs> I figured it out. Now, verily, verily, I say unto you. <laughs> but Paul doesn't repeat himself often, but he does here in Thessalonians. In 4.18, he says, encourage each other with this. And in 5.11, again, therefore comfort each other and edify one another just as you're also doing. Or in the New Living Translation, so encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. This is what we're doing right here, right now. That's what we just did. As you guys got built up and encouraged, realizing the times that we're in. 